following program is produced by the Living Church of God. And greetings, friends, around the world. Did you know that chemical and biological warfare may be just ahead? That millions of Americans and Canadians may soon be exposed to horrifying disease epidemics? What should you do? when supposedly incurable diseases begin to strike our peoples, or when our entire medical establishment is overwhelmed. Is there a real God who can help? Can you really be sure? Stay tuned. Tomorrow's World The Living Church of God presents... Dr. Roderick C. Meredith, Richard Ames, bringing you the good news of your future in tomorrow's world. This week, Dr. Roderick C. Meredith asks, do you believe in divine healing? And now, Dr. Roderick C. Meredith. My friends, even the President of the United States has been warning us of the distinct possibility of chemical and biological attacks on the United States and Canada. Such an attack could occur even before this program is aired. We must not stick our heads in the sand and pretend that these dangers do not exist. These dangers are real and they are imminent. I have with me a powerful article entitled, The Deadliest Woman Alive. We have this article from the New York Daily News released on October 9, 2002. It tells about this woman named Taha who studied in Britain about germ warfare, and she came back, and she is the top germ war er expert in Saddam Hussein's employee. She is very clever, very intelligent. Notice what this article says, quote, in a bold stroke in March 1995, Taha took a group of Western reporters to the al Hakam plant to show them it was just a chicken farm. But a few weeks later, Saddam Hussein's son-in-law, General Hassim Kamal, defected and told Western intelligence what Taha and her research counterparts were really up to. Iraq then gave the UN 600,000 pages of documents outlining its weapons program. It turned out the Iraqis had made thousands of gallons of toxins. Iraq also admitted that during the Persian Gulf War, 166 bombs and 25 long-range missile warheads had been loaded with biological agents ready to rain agonizing death on U.S. troops. They were never used because Iraq feared nuclear retaliation. Still, UNSCOM was skeptical that the whole truth was being told, and they didn't believe Iraq's claims that all the biological agents were destroyed in the summer of 1991. End of quote. Saddam Hussein is a madman. Do you doubt that Saddam would ever refrain from using any weapon at his disposal? What does the great God say will take place just before Christ's return? Notice Luke 21, beginning verse 7. The disciples asked Jesus, saying, Teacher, when will these things be? And what sign will there be when these things are about to take place? And then Jesus told them about false prophets to come. He told them about wars and rumors of wars leading to world war. He said in verse 11, And there will be, not there might be, there will be great earthquakes. Not little earthquakes, my friends, but great earthquakes in various places and famines. You know what famine is? Terrible starvation, lack of food, and pestilences. And, of course, pestilences mean disease epidemics. And that's what is facing us today. I used to think that these disease epidemics would all be just sort of normal, quote-unquote, because of the bad water or bad this or that that would arise. But we now know that some of them may be started intentionally by terrorists, disease epidemics. And there will be fearful sights and great signs from heaven. And this fearful sights is from a Greek word that means terrors. And the commentaries acknowledge that. This may include terrorist activities. Picture, my friends, the disease-ridden and starving peoples of the third world. People like that are all over, but they're not in America and Canada and the Western world. But do you realize that God tells us unless we repent and turn to the great God and do what He says, 
similar things will begin to happen right here in North America. We've been warning you about that for years, but it's getting very close now. How real is God to you? Have you proved to yourself that a real God exists, a great spirit personality that's in charge, that intervenes in human affairs, and that His Word is inspired? I have proved that. I'm basing my life, staking my life on that. I hope you are too. But prove that if you have not. Prove that the Word of God is inspired of God, that this is God speaking. This is God's instruction manual to mankind. Jesus Christ is described in Hebrews 13 and verse 8. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Christ is the one who healed during his ministry over and over again. He took care of disease epidemics such as they were. They're one on the same scale as today, but he has total power. Has Christ changed? Is he still the same? Why don't most churches understand the plain truth about God's healing power? Is that just a quaint notion from a bygone era? Or is it just limited to highly emotional singing and clapping manifestations and high-powered revival meetings where they're shouting and singing in tent campaigns? Is that the kind of healing that's described in the Bible? Well, frankly, you don't find any description, at least, of, of, of yelling and clapping and tent campaigns. The main thing is faith in God and what God says. No, healing is not limited to that kind of thing. For the Jesus Christ of your Bible is alive. He's sitting at God's right hand. Christ can and will intervene to heal if we put our faith and trust in God and in this Word and the promises of this Word. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And thank God for that. His healing power and His direction preaching the gospel is the same as it has always been. What did Jesus Christ tell His disciples to do as they went out to preach the gospel? This has not been changed. This is what Jesus Christ did. He who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Turn with me back to Matthew 10 and verse 1. It's in, when He had called His twelve disciples to Him, Jesus gave them power... These were human men, 12 of them, unconverted because the Holy Spirit was not yet given. He gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease. Notice here in verse 7, he told them as they went out, as you go, preach, saying the kingdom of heaven, or Mark, Luke, and John call it the kingdom of God. Not the kingdom in heaven, but the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So he said, preach the gospel of the kingdom of God, God's coming kingdom. Heal the sick. That's the next thing he told them to do, a vital part of preaching the gospel. He told his servants to do this over and over again. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. This practice continued even after Jesus' resurrection. We read of miraculous healings all the way through the book of Acts. Most of you know that. But was healing just for the original apostles? Some will say, well, that was just for those apostles who were still alive. No, it was not. It was not just for those apostles. Notice chapter 10 of Luke. Turn with me again in your Bible. Let the Bible instruct us. Let the Bible tell us what's going on here. Luke 10, beginning in verse 1. After these things... The Lord, this is the Lord Jesus Christ, appointed 70 others. Here were 35 teams of young men going out two by two, 70 unconverted men going out, and he sent them two by two before his face into every city and place where he himself was about to go. And as they went out, he said in verse 8, Whatever city you enter and they receive you, eat such things as are set before you. And heal the sick there and say to them, The kingdom of God has come to you. They were to talk about that. The kingdom of God, God's government, God's power is being manifested through Jesus Christ and his servants. And here were not just the 12 apostles. Seventy other men were doing this. So you add 70 and 12. What's that? 82. And then later we find that Philip and Stephen were doing other things just the same way. That's 84. How many more? Many more ministers were no doubt doing the same thing. God's power was not limited to the 12 apostles. That should be very clear from the Bible. These 70 unconverted young men were sent out, and Christ gave them that power. Is Jesus Christ the same 
yesterday and today and forever as he worked through his true ministers. Well, there are times that he pours out his spirit in that way more and some less. But basically, in the New Testament gospel era, it depends on our faith. And Jesus said, according to your faith, be it unto you. We've got to understand this subject, my friends. We've got to read this Bible and build faith in God. And we will have divine healing beyond what most of us have imagined. At this point, I invite you to write or call us and request a free copy of a powerful article I have written on this very topic. This article is entitled, Does God Heal Today? It will give you biblical proofs and insights into this very important topic. Because when biological warfare begins and or the biblical prophesied disease epidemics begin, you need to know what to do. So write or call now and request your free copy of this eye-opening article, Does God Heal Today? Just ask for the article on healing. This informative literature is yours absolutely free. No cost, no obligation. If you call this toll-free number, 1-800-934-5579. That's 1-800-934-5579. Or send your request to Tomorrow's World, P.O. Box 501-304, San Diego, California, 92150. With this offer, you will also receive your free subscription to Tomorrow's World magazine. Tomorrow's World magazine keeps you up to date with world trends, Bible prophecy, and the very meaning of life itself. Tomorrow's World. Call now. Now back to our topic, do you believe in divine healing? Notice again, my friends, Luke chapter 10. We were in Luke chapter 10 before the break and talking about what Jesus instructed the 70 other young men he sent out. Seventy men beside the apostles were sent out to preach and to heal and to cast out demons. Luke 10 and verse 9, And heal the sick there, say to them, The kingdom of God has come near you. So he told these 70 young men to heal. We might ask, well, what about uh, casting out demons? Well, I didn't mention that before. He didn't say they were to cast out demons in this passage. But he obviously told them, because notice verse 17. Then the 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the demons are subject to us in your name. The true ministers of God understand about healing, and they do understand about demons. Healing was a constant part of the true ministry of Jesus. Does your church believe in divine healing? If not, why not? You need to think about it. Be willing to think about it. Open your mind and try to seek for true Christianity. Notice Mark, Mark 16, beginning in verse 14. As Jesus appeared to the eleven, as they sat at the table, he rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart because they did not believe those who had seen him after he had risen. Here are the disciples even. After three years of teaching, they still didn't believe. They didn't have God's Holy Spirit yet. They just didn't understand. And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. Now, this is a very clear statement. These signs will. He didn't say they might. These signs will follow those who believe. In my name they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents, and if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick, and they will recover. That's a promise from God, divine healing. So then, after the Lord had spoken to them, he was received up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of God. Jesus is at God's right hand. He's not a dead head. He's the living head of the true church of God today. He's alive. And they went out and preached everywhere the Lord, the Lord Jesus Christ, working with them and confirming the word through the accompanying signs. Now, the faith, you know, dissipated to some extent through the book of Acts, and you see fewer healings toward the end and at the beginning. And today, Jesus said in Luke 18, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? Very few people have that faith. 
And so we find far fewer healings. But we in this work of God have seen hundreds of supernatural healings. I've participated in laying hands on hundreds of anointed claws with one of God's great servants who's not now alive. And we received back hundreds of letters. About one-third of the people were healed supernaturally right away. About one-third were healed later, maybe weeks or months later, they told us. Others apparently were not at all. What's the difference? We sent out the same claws with the same olive oil on the claws symbolizing God's Spirit. The difference was at the other end, obviously. Some had real faith. Some did not. And perhaps some God was dealing with, working with, humbling them, teaching them patience, teaching them lessons, and then they were healed later. But the true Jesus Christ of the Bible is alive. He is now sitting at God's right hand in heaven. He has not changed, so he does heal today through his true ministers, just as he always did. And we need to understand that. Visualize, my friends, if you can, the untold thousands of people lying ill all over the world in hospitals and nursing homes and at home and everywhere. If they had been taught real faith in Jesus Christ and his sacrifice, many of them could supernaturally be healed. Though thousands of these sick people in North America are professing Christians, they have never been taught the vast majority of them, at least, have never been taught about God's healing power. They don't know, and therefore they're not being healed. I remember so well a lady, and I could cite dozens of, of, of instances like this, but I want to pick on a lady called Mrs. Beam, who years ago, back during the 1960s or early 70s, was supernaturally healed of breast cancer. She was in this religious group that I'm affiliated with, the Church of God, and she was, had faith in God. Uh, she came to have faith at least. She had one breast removed of breast cancer, and then she began to attend regularly and put her faith in God when the other breasts began to show cancer signs. And she went back to the same doctors, professional MDs, a cancer clinic, and had them treat her, and they knew that she had cancer just as she did before. No question about it. A whole team of medical doctors worked with her. It got worse and worse, and she was on the verge of death, screaming in pain, when she finally had the minister come one more time, and she said, please pray that God will heal me right now or let me die. I can't stand the pain anymore. And so he prayed fervently, he told me later on. Everyone was crying. A lot of other women were there that had been taking care of her because her husband had to work. And these women were changing her, turning her over and giving her uh, sponge baths and keeping her from uh, deteriorating there in the bed. She was so sick. And so finally, after her, that final prayer, they waited even then. It seemed like an eternity, but they said it was just one or two minutes. And all of a sudden, she relaxed, and a different look came over her face. And she said, it's gone. And some of the other women began to cry. And she went back to the doctors, and of course it was gone. Her body began to slough off pieces of skin and dead tissue over the weeks to come. She was totally, totally, supernaturally healed. God is the healer. But is God against doctors and hospitals? Of course not. Mrs. Beam had already been to doctors and hospitals, and they could not heal her. Then she finally put herself totally in God's hands. Notice what Jesus himself said in Matthew 9 and verse 10. And so it was, as Jesus sat at the table in the house, that behold, many tax collectors and sinners came and sat down with Jesus and with his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? When Jesus heard that, he said to them, Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. But go and learn this. I desire mercy and not sacrifice, for I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. The sick often do need a physician. And we do need to realize that doctors are necessary. Doctors can help a lot in many instances. Each one of us must decide how far we want to go with doctors, drugs, and knives. We know, and the doctors admit, there are side effects to virtually everything man does. Every strong drug has a side effect. And there are no bad side effects to what God does. And we need to understand that. We're living in a faithless age. But as we grow in faith, and as God intervenes in human affairs and otherwise near the end of this age, many more of God's people are going to begin to build faith. 
they will recapture the faith once delivered, and God will begin to heal and heal and heal and show His power. I'm quite sure that's going to happen. This work of God is going to be at the forefront of that, the spear point of getting people back to the faith once delivered. God says, as it says in this verse, God desires mercy and not sacrifice. God desires mercy and not self-righteousness. So we do not condemn anyone who goes to doctors. Many should go to doctors, and each one has to decide when and how much and how far to go with that. You have to decide that. But ultimately, when doctors can't heal, you'd better learn to put your faith and trust in God. And many may want to go to God and probably should go to God in the first place, still may get a checkup. But look to God. Bring God into the picture. Don't leave God out of the picture, my friends. Many of you have never been taught about that. You do not understand, for that is a vital part of apostolic Christianity. Notice in Acts 8, verse 4, Therefore those who were scattered, this was a terrible scattering of God's people after the martyrdom of Stephen, they went everywhere preaching the word. So all kinds of people went out, not just the apostles. Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ to them. And Christ involves a lot more than just they believe on the Lord. As you'll see, it shows God's power and what God does. And the multitudes with one accord heeded the things spoken by Philip, hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. Those miracles validated what Philip was saying here. For unclean spirits, crying with a loud voice, came out of many who were possessed, and many who were paralyzed and lame were healed. Yes, many were healed supernaturally through this young man, Philip, who, as you read back in Acts 6, had just been ordained a deacon. Now, maybe he'd been ordained a minister by this time. It doesn't say. But he certainly hadn't been a minister very long. He was just ordained a deacon, very zealous, but he believed what God said. And there was great joy in that city. You better believe it. People were being healed, unclean spirits were being cast out, and God's power was being shown by this young man who had just been ordained a deacon not that many months earlier. This is a vital part of first century Christianity, apostolic Christianity, and we need to get back to that, back to the faith once delivered, and have that blessing and that faith in a very real God. Again, my friends, be sure to write or call and request your free copy of this important article I've talked about, Does God Heal Today? You need this information. You need biblical proof. You need to understand this powerful article, Does God Heal Today? will open your eyes to a part of true biblical Christianity you may never have understood before. So call now and request your free copy of this vital article. Just ask for the article on healing. This informative literature is yours absolutely free. No cost, no obligation. If you call this toll-free number, 1-800-934-5579. That's 1-800-934-5579. Or send your request to Tomorrow's World, P.O. Box 501-304, San Diego, California, 92150. With this offer, you will also receive your free subscription to Tomorrow's World magazine. Tomorrow's World magazine keeps you up to date with world trends, Bible prophecy, and the very meaning of life itself. Tomorrow's World. Call now. My friends, we in this work which supports the Tomorrow's World program believe what the Bible says. We believe that the time is soon coming when thousands of you will need God's supernatural intervention to protect you and to heal you during these terrible tribulations and disease epidemics, and they are certain to come on our peoples. Over the last few decades, we know of hundreds of people who have been supernaturally healed by following the biblical example given in Acts chapter 19. I want to turn there, and I hope you'll turn with me and read this. Here is a biblical example. This is from the Bible, the mind of God, God's instruction manual to us. And notice what it says. Acts chapter 19, verse 11. Now, God worked unusual miracles by the hand of Paul, so that even handkerchiefs or aprons were brought from his body to the sick, and the diseases left them, and evil spirits went out of them. God healed people, and he caused demons to be cast out. 
because Paul would anoint these cloths and send them from his body to places where he could not go. He could not travel all over the world at that time. He didn't have any private jet plane and get there. No way to reach all these people. So he sent these cloths and people were supernaturally healed. This is a revelation of the way God works. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever, as we read in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. So we practice this biblical example, and we'll be pleased to send an anointed cloth to any one of you who chooses to trust God for healing. You do need faith, though. Remember I've said, Jesus said, according to your faith, be it unto you. But if you really believe this, or if you want to write and get this article first, does God heal today? Study the Scriptures and build your faith and believe, then you may have even more faith. But if you have faith and need God's healing and want God's healing, specifically request an anointed cloth. Let us all strive to recapture the faith once delivered to the saints. Let us learn to fully trust the God of the Bible Let's follow the example of Jesus. Let's follow the example of the early apostles. Let's follow the example of Stephen and Philip and the others who healed people all the way through the book of Acts. Let's get back to the faith once delivered. Again, be sure to write or call now and request your copy of this vital article entitled, Does God Heal Today? Be sure to make time each week to tune in to the Tomorrow's World program on this program, you will gain precious information and insights available nowhere else. Richard Ames and I will give you a real understanding of current events. You'll be able to see the way God is working, the way God is intervening in human affairs. Reading your newspapers, following the news on television will have a lot more meaning because you will understand that the great God, the true God, is indeed intervening to bring about His purpose and His will. As I've told you on this program, that same God will intervene, that real God, He will intervene as your Father through His Son, Jesus Christ, and you can be healed, and your family can be healed and blessed if you will turn to the God of the Bible through the true Jesus Christ. So understand that. Be sure that you do really grasp that fact that you're dealing with reality. This is not something that is just an idea or a theory. This is something that multiple thousands of people are following right now. And they are often healed. They are blessed. Their lives are rich with meaning. They understand the purpose that God is working out here below. So tune in each week. Make time to tune in to the Tomorrow's World program. And you will understand. And if you will hear and prove and act on the truth, you too will be blessed. See you right here next week. This informative literature is yours absolutely free. No cost, no obligation. If you call this toll-free number, 1-800-934-5579. Or send your request to Tomorrow's World, P.O. Box 501-304, San Diego, California, 92150. We invite you to visit our webpage at tomorrowsworld.org. The preceding program is produced by the Living Church of God.